<laughs> Woo! Yo, we're starting off today continuing with the role of W's from the New York Giants, man. Before I even get into that, this some of y'all don't even know who this guy is, but Tyrone Magnus, shout out to Tyrone Magnus. He's an absolute legend in the YouTube community, man. I've been following this guy since like 2015, back when he only had a couple thousand subs. Now he's at 1.8 million. You know, he's a great, you know, he's, a, he's actually an actor as well, you know what I'm saying? But he's a great um content creator over there. He mostly does reaction vids and movie reviews and whatnot. Big fan of him, and he's a big fan of, you know, uh, Zack Snyder like I am one now with the whole Snyder Cut thing going on. The dude actually got a chance to interview Zack Snyder, and Zack said he would appear on his channel as well. Massive W's all around to start off this day, man. So shout out to Tyrone. I know he's never going to see this video, but it's really great to see that because, you know, you, I, I basically watched his channel grow into what it is today, and that's amazing, you know what I'm saying? That's an amazing story. But to get to the Giants, it's also massive Ws over here. I know a lot of people won't see it as that, but I like the small moves that we made today. And it's honestly, it was like one small move that we made today, and the rest of them were just contract details coming out in terms of Nate Solder. So first, Casey Crater. We got one of the best long snappers in the NFL back on the Giants roster, man. I absolutely love Casey Crater. I think he's not necessarily underrated because nobody is out here celebrating a long snapper. So I'll just say he's he's just a piece that does his job at a really high level and not many people know about him because he is a long snapper. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just a fact of the matter. It's not like it's a... You know, this might hurt some people. It's not like it's a Dalvin Thompson type situation where he's legit underrated. No, Casey Crater is just, he's a really good long snapper. He does his job well. He does it as a high level and he does it consistently. Even when we signed him last year from the Broncos, I was very happy about it. Like I'll even pop that video up there. I was extremely happy about it because in 2019, um, you know, Giants legend Zach Diasi, he is a Giants legend, but he had his worst year in 2019, and that's part of the reason why Aldrich Rosas had his worst year since his rookie year. You know what I'm saying? The long snapper directly affects how the kicker performs. Casey Crater was an immediate upgrade and a really big upgrade at that to Zach Diasi, and we saw it. Casey Crater just did his job once again at a high level, just was always consistent, and it led to Graham Gano having one of his best, if not his best, you know, career year in the NFL with the Giants. Gano was the best kicker in the NFL last year. I don't want to hear it. The Giants have a pretty good special teams group. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're keeping the, the picture you see right now is the trio of Casey Crater, Graham Slam Gano, and, uh, you know, Riley Dixon. We, we need a name. We need a nickname for Riley Dixon. You know what I'm saying? Graham Slam, Obi-Wan, Genobi, we, we got all that. But we need a nickname for Riley Dixon. Hopefully, Riley Dixon gets back to his, like, 2018, 2019 form where he was like simply amazing. He was okay last year, you know what I'm saying? But hopefully he gets back to that form. But we're just keeping the crew together and you love to see it. Don't, don't, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, basically. Don't go tamper with something that's working out quite well for you. So I love the fact that we got Casey Crater back. And then another massive W for the Giants. Nate Solder's contract restructure details are out. And this is simply amazing to me. Solder's salary cap, or I, I guess you should say his salary will be cut to $4 million, which creates an extra $6 million for us in cap savings. I think Solder was about to make $10 million this year or something like that. So we save an extra six, right? His cap hit. So they basically cut Nate Solder without cutting Nate Solder, if that makes sense. Because if we cut him, we would have saved $6 million post June 1st. We're saving it while keeping him on the roster as a swing tackle slash backup tackle, in my opinion. Now, he still is going to be fighting for a starting job, not with Andrew Thomas at the left side. I think definitely with Matt Pert on the right side as well. But I got faith that Matt Pert is either going to beat him out outright and start, you know, at right tackle day one or eventually beat him out during the season. Whatever the case is. We now have a swing tackle for the price of $4 million, which is actually the same contract, or I should say very similar contract to what we gave Cam Fleming last year, who was our swing tackle last year. We gave him a one-year $3.5 million deal. Um, I'm This one-year $4 million deal, or well, it is in one year, but I'm looking at it as a one-year $4 million deal just because for this year, I'm guessing they push back some, you know, some more cap next year. Harvard worked it out. 
You know, this video is obviously about how Nate Solder and his restructured contract affects us in the offseason in 2021 with all the stuff that's going on about the cap. I have to put that disclaimer there. But it's a very similar to what we gave Cam Fleming. Because of that, I don't really expect Cam Fleming to be back. And honestly, if we were to re-sign Cam Fleming, I want to say it would have been something similar to this. You know, don't quote me on that. Just because swing tackles and backup tackles tackles in general offensive line depth in general is not the easiest thing to find in the nfl now is nate solder a worthy starter um i really don't think so like i wouldn't mind seeing how he does at the right tackle spot but i really do want to move on from that and just you know have matt peart start and have solder be the swing have him be the backup have him be kind of a mentor role even though he himself said he doesn't want to be the mentor role I, I i do prefer that than to have him starting again and of course i i do got to put out even though this is a w for us because well we free up cap space we you know while keeping a backup tackle you know offensive line depth i do want to say i low-key i did want more savings from this um because it's just six mil i was hoping for maybe eight mil in savings or something but it is what it is not gonna complain too much and you guys let me know what you think that right now the offensive line lineup is looking like you know what a lot of people predicted it to be the very young one of you know thomas hernandez gates lemieux and pert now the only thing there that i would consider changing is you know lemieux at right tackle maybe we go in the draft and we get somebody like a wyatt davis in the second round or maybe we shift gates back to right guard and get a center I, I don't know. I, I would like keeping Nick Gates at center, though. You know, he was pretty good in his first year. You know, he could only go up from here, I would imagine. Wouldn't mind if they do get a center out either in the draft or free agency, though, and then shift them back to right guard. And then, of course, once again, Lemieux, he was just a rookie, so I'm not completely giving up on the guy. But I do got to acknowledge the fact that he wasn't great in pass protection. He's only just a run blocker as of right now. He can develop into, you know, a good all around offensive lineman and a good enough pass blocker, and, you know, that would be fine we don't know if that's gonna happen yet you know once again he is just a rookie so i'm not completely giving up on him but i would definitely prefer if we do you know go in the draft in the second round and get a guy like Wyatt davis slide him right in there and we have a pretty good offensive line at that point i would say once again you guys let me know what you think and of course we're all patiently awaiting whatever is gonna happen later in the day man whether whether or not Kenny Galladay is going to be signed to the Giants, uh, whether or not the Giants make any more moves today and whatnot, it is just the question, right? It's just the question of the day. Well, we'll see what happens, honestly. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, this isn't the video for it. But whether or not we get Kenny Galladay, I'm going to be fine either way. Because I was looking at a wide receiver in the draft anyway before free agency began. So that's it for now. Let me know what you all think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.